In today's video, I'm be going over the number one niche for beginners to get into for Amazon Killer Rec Publishing and Audible ACS. What is going on guys? Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Dane. On this channel, I talk all about self-publishing books on Amazon, all in entrepreneurship and just lifestyle in general. So if that kind of thing interests you, make sure you subscribe, drop a like on the video and hit the notification bell so you know when I post new videos. In today's video, I'm be going over the number one, in my opinion, the number one best niche for beginners to get into when it comes to Amazon Killer Rec Publishing and Audible ACX. And I'm talking about self-publishing books through each of these platforms here. So if you're brand new to self-publishing, you're looking to get into a niche and you just can't figure out what to get into because there's there's a lot to choose from. I definitely feel your pain there. I was in the same boat when I got started. It's very overwhelming when you're looking at Amazon's bestseller list and there's like tons and tons and tons and tons of different categories or niches to pick from. And you just don't know which one is going to be the best one for you, the one that's gonna pan out the best in order to make a lot of money and make high quality books too. Without further ado, I'm gonna jump into my computer here. I'm going over exactly why I think this is the best niche for beginners. I'm gonna showing you some examples and talking about the specifics as to why I think it's the best one for you to get into if you're brand new to self-publishing on Amazon Killer Rock Publishing and Audible ACX specifically, okay? So without further ado, let's jump on my computer and get going with this. So as you can see, top niche for beginner self-publishers. So here is the grand reveal of what the niche is. It is crafts, hobbies, and homes. And I talk about this niche all the time on my channel. So if you're not new to my channel right now, you've watched a bunch of my other videos, you know that I talk about crafts, hobbies, and home quite a bit. And there is a main reason why I talk about it so much is because most people who are watching my channel are generally new to this business model, uh, don't really know where to get started. So I talk about it quite a bit, but I wanna make a video specifically here talking about why I personally think this is the best niche for beginners to get into. And you'll also notice when I talk about this niche and when I'm going through this video, I'm talk I'll am i mention a few words like surface level niche and sub-level niches. So when it comes to surface level niche, that is a crafts, hobbies, and home type of thing. Business and money, self-help, those are surface level niches. They're the first niche that you'll see on the list. And I'll show you in a second what this looks like when you look up books on the Amazon store. And you'll also hear me referencing the word sub-level niche. And what sub-level niches are, are niches that fall below those surface level niches. So for example, in crafts, hobbies, and home, there's gardening, there's crafts, and there's definitely things like home improvement, stuff like that. Those would be sub-level sub niches. And these sub-level niches go um, many, many layers below just the sub-level niche. So you can pick, you can go surface level niche, sub-level niche, and then there's sub-levels to the sub-level. So I'll show you what that looks like in just a second, but I want to explain that because I do mention those words a few times in this video. So why is this the best beginner niche? First things first, building a brand is simple given all of the types of books you can make. So there are tons and tons of books that fall within crafts, hobbies, and home that are all pretty similar that you can make a brand around, which I like a lot. When it comes to being a beginner with this, building a brand is very, very important. So like I said here, countless sub-level niches can be found within this surface level niche. So low content, high content audiobooks are also all high potential books that you can make. So not only can you make high content books, which would be a 30,000 word book, you can make low content books like journals, coloring books, stuff like that. And you can also make audiobooks out of the books that fall within crafts, hobbies, and homes. So it kind of hits all three of those sections. Like I said, most books can be turned into audiobooks, which isn't the case for a lot of other surface level niches. So what I mean by this is that there are a lot of other surface level niches that you can make books for, but they just don't really make sense when it comes to making audiobooks out of them. They need a lot of pictures. It just doesn't, it's not really an audiobook friendly topic. But when it comes to crafts, hobbies, and home, a lot of the sub level niches that you'll find within it can and do make sense to make books about in audio format. Reason number two is that formal education is generally not needed to make the most of reason number two is that formal education is generally not needed to make most of the books inside this niche, which is very, it's a plus, especially if you're a beginner to this kind of thing. So an example of this might be to create a book about maybe health issues or something like that, medical issues, you probably need some sort of education within that niche to speak about it in a book. But on the flip side, when it comes to things like gardening, crafts, cooking, those are typically just experience slash skill based topics that you can make books about if you have experience in them or if you can find a ghostwriter who also has years of experience in them because we work with ghostwriters a lot of the time to write the book for you so it's generally a little bit easier to find niches that are suitable for your expertise level or your ghostwriter's expertise level within the crafts hobbies and home surface level niche reason number three and this is pretty obvious this is this should be a thing for every niche if you're going to say it's a good niche is that there are very high potential for earnings within this niche. So the demographic that likes this surface level niche, so the people that are buying these kinds of books, people that are interested in these kinds of books, prefer reading books for information about it rather than like searching it up on the internet. 
the demographic for this is a little bit older, so they're not really younger Gen Z people who are looking things up on the internet all the time. A little older, so they're looking for books to read about to get the information supplied to them that they're about the niche that they're interested in. So from our side, we're making the books, supplying them to these people. So that kind of thing is a very good thing. So let's take a look at some of the examples on KDP and ACX just to give you an idea for the earnings potential that some of these sub-level niches have within crafts, hobbies, and home. So I'm here on the Amazon bestsellers list and you can see on the left here, I'm just in the books department. So I have all of the categories showing up here in front of me. So I'm gonna go on the left here and I'm going to choose crafts, hobbies, and home. And before I get into that, I just wanna say like, for example, if you're looking at another sub-level or a surface level niche, cookbooks, food, and wine, um, I was talking about the audiobooks earlier. Cookbooks, food and wine generally don't really work in audiobook format because they require pictures. People like looking at pictures when it comes to audiobooks or when it comes to cookbooks. So it kind of doesn't make sense to make an audiobook out of a cookbook. But when it comes to crafts, hobbies, and home, there's tons of different books that you can make audiobooks out of that make sense in audio format. So I just want to clarify that. So I'm going to click into crafts, hobbies, and home here. And on the left, you're going to see here are all of the sub-level niches that fall within crafts, hobbies, and home. So there's tons and tons of them. Once you click them, there's going to be even more that drop down. So if I click into, say, gardening and landscape, you're going to see there's tons more <laughs> sub-level niches that come up in here. You could have a book about all these kinds of things. Flowers, you have a book about fruit, book about garden designs. You can have a book about all of these sub-level niches, which is why there's so many options to make books about. And when I click into here, you can see that the books in here are actually making very good money on top of already being able to make tons of books about it. So there's a plus there, and there's also the plus that you can make a ton of money off of these topics. For example, I'm using the um, Chrome extension BookBeam to see these numbers down below the books. You can see the kind of money that these books are making every single day. So the reason why this one is low is because it's like an ebook. But if you look at the paperback book, those are the ones that we focus on for nonfiction. You can see it's selling for thirteen sixty nine, and it's average BSR. So the popularity is it's number five hundred selling on the Amazon store. So it's doing very very well. And you can see right here it's making around thirteen hundred dollars per day off of this book, one single book. Going over this one, twenty one dollars making seventeen hundred dollars per day. Scrolling down, let's find another paperback. This one's very high price. It's a hardcover, $24.48, making $3,000 per day. And let's find one more. You can see this one right here, $13.99 for the paperback. It's making $1,000 per day. So those are all very, very high numbers. I'd be happy with $100 per day from a single book. If you have 10 books making you $100 per day, that's $1,000 per day coming in from your publishing business. So I just wanted to show you guys as a beginner, given that the barrier for entering for this specific niche that we're talking about isn't very difficult. It's perfect for beginners to get into, make books about, and the earnings potential is very high. And this is only from KDP. This is only your paperbacks and your eBooks. On top of that, audiobooks sell very well in this niche as well. And you can make tons and tons of money through Audible, which is just an added bonus. Reason number four here, you can utilize multiple pen names amongst different sub-level niches. So by this, I mean you can make books in similar sub-niches within the main surface level niche. So for example, you can make you can have one pen name focused on all the gardening books. You can have one pen name focused on all of the books that are about crafts. So you have two pen names making books about specific sub-level niches. So you don't have one pen name making books about tons of sub-level niches. The thing is these niches are all similar enough that you can make one overarching brand and then have multiple pen names below it focused on the different sub-level niches. Reason number five that I like this niche is because writing costs are generally a lot lower than other niches. And this is a big one. So if you're not familiar, we opt to hiring ghostwriters to write our books for us with this business model. So these ghostwriters are experts in the sub-level niches that we have them write our books about. So for books that fall within crafts, hobbies, and homes, generally speaking, this isn't the case for all of them. We can get books for around $800 to get them written at around 30,000 words. So 30,000 words being kind of the uh, main amount that we'd like to get our books written to. That's a good length. It's a good solid book. You can get 50,000 words as well. But 30,000 is a good benchmark. Compare that to other niches where writing is usually $1,000 for 30,000 words. And trust me, I've made a lot of books within crafts, hobbies, and home. I know that the pricing is usually a little bit less compared to other things like business and money, self-help, those kinds of ones that are also very popular. Usually those are a little bit more expensive compared to crafts, hobbies, and home. So just something to keep in mind when you're picking your first niche. Reason number six, the sheer amount of sub-level niches that are similar is very helpful. So it's kind of similar to what I was talking about earlier, but this allows for easily bundling books together. Okay, so if you have two books about gardening, two books about crafts, you can always make a bundle with all four of those books or all put two books into one bundle, which kind of gives you another free book. All right, so a bundle is just one book you've had written already, another book you've had written already, put them together, and you can sell that put together book as its own book. So you get a, technically a free book when it comes to bundling. And it's very easy to do this in the crafts, hobbies, and home niche. Another thing that's great about having similar sub-level niches is that it's easy to keep your brand singular focused. Some publishers will have a scattered focus when it comes to their publishing brand. 
due to having many surface level niches. So they'll have like business and money, self-help, uh, cookbooks and, and food, and they'll have uh, crafts, hobbies and home. And they'll combine that all together into their one brand. Personally, I think it looks a lot more professional if you keep a brand within one single surface level niche. And given that crafts, hobbies and home has so many different sub level niches, it's easy to keep your brand focused on one single niche. And they're also very um, profitable make lots of money off this one so it's very easy to keep that brand singular focused final reason here number seven it's a huge opportunity for additional income sources all right and with crafts hobbies at home i think this is one of the best niches for these situations so for example you can build an e-com store to sell products related to your niche you can sell crafting tools gardening tools guides etc through this online store that's related to your brand that you promote through an email list or through a social media following whatever it may be this is much harder to do with things like self-help uh, style niches where it's hard to make products to sell on top of just your books but for this one you could source out gardening tools crafting tools pretty easily and sell those through an online website and make additional income on top of the income you make from your books so the opportunity for this is huge and that's why i like this niche because it allows you to do this very easily so that is pretty much it for this video hopefully you guys enjoyed my explanation as to why i like crafts hobbies and homes as the best beginner niche for people just getting into self-publishing when it comes to amazon killer Rec publishing and Audible ACX. There's tons of reasons there. I don't want to restate them here, but you can go back to the video and look through the seven main reasons why I think they're, it's such a good niche when it comes to being a beginner in this online business. So before I let you guys go, I do want to mention if you are a beginner and you're just looking to get started with this and you want some a little bit of a guide to get going with self-publishing, I do have a 100% free Facebook community. It's linked. It's the first link in the description down below. And when you join that Facebook group, at the top, you're going to see pinned is my five-step guide to getting started with self-publishing. So if you're brand new to this, you don't know where to get started, this guide is the perfect thing for you. And it's 100% free. And also, you can post any questions you might have about self-publishing in that Facebook group. And they're usually answered by me or any experts that are in there. So again, if you want to join that group, first link in the description, and I'll see you in the free Facebook group. Anyways, guys, that's it for today's video. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. If you did, again, make sure you subscribe, drop a like on the video, and hit the notification bell so you know when I post new videos. I try to post new videos about self-publishing, online entrepreneurship, and just lifestyle in general every single week. So if that works for you, I'll see you guys in next week's video. Peace.